Dispensationalism is a very important doctrine because it demands that you can't apply every verse to yourself. You have to divide the verses to the right time period and right group of people. When you start doing that, the verses in the Bible are going to make sense and you won't apply wrong doctrine to yourself. Now, one of the things that is very obvious in dispensationalism, this is why it is so important, is throughout the books of the Old Testament. Now, our sacrifice is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, yes? Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, they did not have the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. They had the sacrifice of what? They had the sacrifice of animals. So this is evident proof that there is definitely a difference. So there is a difference. There has to be dispensationalism. Sacrifice of animals and the sacrifice of Christ. Now, here's the thing, is that if you look at the sacrifice of animals right here, you're going to see that the salvation method during the Old Testament is extremely different, salvation in the Old Testament. You know what you have to do for salvation in the Old Testament? Christians, our salvation in the New Testament is different. It is based on faith without works. But when you look at the Old Testament, what they had to do, whether you like it or not, if you don't believe in this, it's not going to make sense how they do this system. They had to do faith and works. Faith and works. I know you're Baptist and this sounds like heresy, and you're going to go, oh, it's a cult, it's a cult, it's a cult. Look, if you don't believe in this, you're not going to make sense of why God did this during the Old Testament. Now, salvation in the Old Testament is faith and works. Why? Here's the thing. Is that Jesus obviously did not die on the cross yet. So there is no way that you can put your faith alone in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for salvation. Now... Some fundamentalists might say, well, they actually did. They had faith in the sacrifice of Jesus. What? How? He didn't die on the cross yet. They'll say this because of the animals. It represented the death of Jesus. But here's an obvious question, okay? Are you telling me these animals is perfect like Jesus Christ? No, it's imperfect. So here's the thing. Yes, they had faith. See, it's faith and works. Not just, we're not saying works, all right? We're saying faith and works. Why? We're faith without works. Why? Why is it without works? Because we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's perfect. But in the Old Testament, when they had faith, yes, it was in the faith, the sacrifice that the animals represented. But are you telling me it's perfect like Jesus Christ? No. So guess what? That's why you have to do works with that. You might say, no, I don't think so. Okay, then let me ask you this obvious question. Why did they even do animal sacrifices to begin with if they failed in a work? See that? They had to do works. And when their works failed in something, they had to have faith. In what? The sacrifice of animals to give it a clean slate. Look at Leviticus chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 13. The Bible says right here, Leviticus 4.13, And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against, look at this, works, any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. Look at that, see? They're doing works. But when they fail in the work, what do they do? Then they resort to verse 20. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be what? Forgiven them. Look at that. So you'll notice right here that in the Old Testament, throughout the book of Leviticus, there is a sacrifice of animals. Why? So their sins can be forgiven. See, the forgiveness of sins was not based upon the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It was based on the sacrifice of animals. So because of this, you see that? Their sins are forgiven. But that does not ignore good works. They have to do works. Because let's keep reading right here. We see works again. Verse 22. When a ruler has sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord his God concerning things which should not be done and is guilty. See that? They have to do... <coughs> excuse me. Notice that verse 22. This person has to 
keep the commandments of the Lord. See, all over, there's works. But if he fails in his works, what does he do? You'll notice the sacrifice of blood again. Verse 26. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as a fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin. And it shall be what? Forgiven him. You see that all over. I'm not going to read all the other verses. But here are the verses I'm going to be writing down where you see faith and works. Works where they had to keep the commandments. Faith where they had to take the blood of animal sacrifices to give them a clean slate. 13, 20, 22, 26, 27, 31, and 35. You'll see that all over the Bible. Let's also look at the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to look at Hebrews 9.19. Hebrews 9.19. Hebrews chapter 9, and we will look at verse 19. If you really think that Christian salvation is the same as Old Testament salvation, then why could we not just continue what the Jews did, huh? Making animal sacrifices. I mean, if that's all it takes. Unless there's something imperfect about this unless there's something about their salvation that's very different from Christians. You see, you know, some fundamentalists and Baptists, they're going to be saying, well, you can't say that the Old Testament, they had to do works for salvation because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The book of Isaiah said, all our righteousness are filthy rags. See, works don't count. You know what their problem is? Their problem is that they fail to understand this. They had to do works, and yes, it was imperfect. That's why they had to do what? This one in addition. See, faith and works, faith and works. They had to have this as an addition to give them what? A clean slate. It's impossible anyone in the Old Testament was perfect in good works. Yes, yes, it's impossible. So that's why they had to have animal sacrifices to give them a clean slate all over again. But just because they did the sacrifice of animals, do you think that they thought, I don't have to keep the commandments for my salvation? No, after they did the animal sacrifice, they had to keep the commandments again. And guess what? If they failed in commandments again, can they bet their soul on the sacrifice of animals? No, they had to start all over again. See that? It's not permanent. It's something that had to be consistently done over and over again. Very different from Christians. Look at Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 19. <clears throat> the Bible says, for when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Verse 21, Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Notice verse 22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is what? No remission. See? There is a forgiveness of sins through animal sacrifices. Some Baptists and fundamentalists who are ignorant, they will say, well, the animal sacrifices did not do anything with their salvation. No, it did. See, sin's forgiven. Sin's forgiven. The law, almost all things by the law, law of Moses, Old Testament law, purged with blood. Without blood, no what? Remission, forgiveness of sins. You saw Leviticus. It's that forgiveness, 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 forgiveness all over. But here's something that's very interesting. Look at chapter 10. <clears throat> chapter 10, verse 4. Old Testament saints, their sins were forgiven, but they were not cleared. Why? Because animal sacrifices are imperfect. There was one sacrifice that's perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So their salvation was counted for. All right, It was counted for. But it was not actually clear their sins. Because look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. The Bible says right here, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should what? Take away sin. See, you couldn't take it away. You also look at chapter 10 verse 10. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of what? The body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse 11, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which cannot, what? Take away sins. It can never take away sins. So you'll notice right here the sacrifices of animals cannot clear the sins. But the sacrifice of Jesus Christ 
it could clear the sins. You'll also notice this is utmost proof Old Testament saints were not saved like New Testament saints. Our salvation is what? Based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And you'll notice that at verse 10, it's once for all, right? One time. It's permanent. But these Old Testament saints, when they had to get their, their animal sacrifices, what was it? They had to consistently do it. You see, if you think that this is the same like this and that salvation has been the same, you're not reading your Bible. Amen. It just does not make sense anyways. Because if you think that the Old Testament saints were saved like we were, then we could have just continued what the Old Testament saints did. So you'll notice right here that there is definitely a difference of forgiveness of sins and salvations. You'll also notice Exodus 34. Let's close it right here, Exodus 34. You'll notice that in Exodus 34, even God told Moses that the children of Israel, yes, their sins were forgiven, but they were not cleared. Look at Exodus chapter 34. We're going to read verse 7. <clears throat> Keeping mercy for thousands. Look at this. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Okay, so God can forgive sins in the Old Testament. But, and that will by no means clear the guilty. But he cannot clear. He cannot take away it. So you notice right here, sins cannot be cleared. But they could be forgiven during the Old Testament. See, if you really think that Christians, how they receive forgiveness of sins, is the same way that Old Testament saints received it, you got problems, man. You got problems. There's absolutely no doubt there's a difference right here of salvation time periods.